The 0.23, according to WrestleNomics here, is the lowest 18 to 49. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Dating back to June 24 of 2020. During the pandemic? Brian, Brian and Vini, along with Granny and Craig and sometimes other people. I have never had so much fun watching a show. Curtis Iakea, you realize this guy went to college in California and majored in like economics or something like that. I would pay a million dollars for King Curtis Iakea and The Rock to go back and forth on SmackDown. I can't take my eyes off his forehead. You've all seen the game Plinko. Do they make a gig-sized chip that we could put on Prince Iakea's forehead? He's one of those guys you're just happy pro wrestling exists. Yeah, because yes. he wouldn't be as great in any other field. Yeah, what's he going to do? He's going to work on... Uh, Baskin Robbins? Yeah. Here is your ice cream! Enjoy your... The flavor yummy. of the month! Yes! Is... Chocolate! Remember that guy that asked us to do some... Uh, wrestler impressions? Wrestler impressions. That's what we've done now for I 15 minutes. I finally found one I can do. The King wizard? Curtis Iakea. Just a guy that fucking yells all the time. <laughs> How ironic. Iron... How's it going, everybody? Why is King Curtis not here to have his own podcast? I don't know. We're sitting here talking about what an absolute, complete maniac Curtis Iakea was. The actual maniac is Sika, who I believe came out of the water and ate a raw fish. Yeah. (laughs) And like a fucking piece comes off. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. There's like the fish's head, and you see this big fucking eyeball. He goes, ah! And he bites the fucking head off this fish. This fucking guy's eating a raw fish. What? This is, of course, Roman Reigns' father. At some point, Roman Reigns will finally lose the Universal Heavyweight Championship. When that happens, he needs to disappear for a while. And when he comes back, he needs to go crazy in the jungle. Turn his back on society. This is the oddest booking I've ever heard in my life. Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange Cassidy. Uh. <laughs> Why? How crazy. <laughs> Sam hates it, but he says let's do ten more. Sensible. Hush, Sam. Knock, knock. Who's there? Arthur. Arthur who? Arthur Gotten. <laughs> what? Arthur Gotten? Yeah. What's that? I don't know. Is it German? God damn it. Somebody explain this to me. Nobody gets it, and I'm angry. Greg Valentine versus JYD. I have Valentine starts twisting Valentine's leg. That sounds good. Okay. <laughs> I'll watch Cheeto Santino. Uh, pl- Cheeto versus, Santino. <laughs> Ricky Steamboat versus Matt Boone. Matt and also. Born? Boone. B O O N E. Daniel Boone? Boone? Whatever. I have an answer on that knock knock joke. By oh, the you way. do? Yep. Knock knock. Who's there? Offer. O F F E R. Offer gotten. Ah, uh, forgotten. That's what it is. He forgot who he was after he knocked on the door? Yes. Hmm. Well, you're welcome. These were shows. Uh, my wife was like, weren't those the guys that were water skiing last week? Yes. <laughs> she was paying attention to the water skiing video. Found their target audience. It was Is on. Is that her thing? She, uh, no, it was on. Harry and, and water skiers? I watched the... <laughs> Harry Frenchman. I mean, there's got to be something for everybody, right? Uh, apparently. <laughs> Should I Google it? Uh, I'm way ahead of you. All right. I'm not seeing any of those links. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Ken Resnick reminds me of? A Lego character? That too. Producer Rob. How so? Just next time. Next he time, looks a little bit like him. Next time you there. watch him, mm-hmm. just think Producer Rob. I have a feeling I know exactly how the show is going to go, Lance. <laughs> I'll bet I liked him better than you did. Yeah. Probably. I am sick as a dog. Mm, sounds great. Um, yeah, I got Glad uh, you're here in the room with me. The show did 747,000 viewers ouch. and a point two three. The point two three is the lowest 18 to 49. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Dating back to June 24 of 2020. During the pandemic? You know, it opened up with 939. And it just fell off a cliff over the next half hour for the Shibata match, 
the uh, beginning of the Young Bucks match. I mean, it dropped all the way down to 7-Eleven. A Mercedes doing commentary meant nothing. And uh, the only other good thing is, you know, the number one contenders match. I mean, they did grow uh, pretty significantly, actually, for the overrun. But I don't think we should panic today. No. Because there are anomalies that occur. You know, if this is a trend and we start getting down to 2022 or 2020 numbers in 18 to 49, then there's something to talk about. But, uh, you know, it's one week. Will Ospreay is in that horrible position where if he doesn't have a match of the year, you're almost disappointed. <laughs> it's like, this was a really enjoyable match. So they showed Okada arriving, and he never came out in front of the crowd because he was not there. So he That's was smart, he was in Japan. Yep, they filmed footage last week to make it seem like he was there. But he is in Japan, and he's getting some stuff done, and he's looking for a place here in America. Bucks hit the EVP trigger. Sort of. Sort of. Nick goes for the EVP trigger. He and it, slips. His fucking foot just slipped. I mean, he didn't trip on the ref. Nope. He didn't get his foot caught. Like, he just stepped back like he was on ice, and his foot just fucking kept going. I just thought this segment was awkward. The build from last week was, I have a proposition for you, which seems like a big thing if it's like, hey, next week I got a big proposition for you. They schedule this big interview, and it's just like, hey, you know, if you want some advice, I'll give it to you. So listen. Okay. These rankings. John Moxley, he's a number three contender, even though he has not had a win in six weeks. And in fact, has vanished. But he's moved up in the rankings. They have the up arrow. He's moved up. Ditch the fucking rankings and quit showing these stats. It just fucks up everything you're doing. Mercedes on commentary. Sort of. Mercedes was useless on commentary. She sat there and watched the match and said, oh, wow, huh? And then they would ask her a question. She half answered. And then she was literally there to try to pop a rating, which she did not. They made her look like not a star. And she's only three weeks in. And so it is official. Swerve and Joe for the AW title at Dynasty. Thought this was a good match. Very good match. Excellent main event, I would say. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I struggled to figure out who the babyface was in this match. Sean Spears, I think. No, Sean Spears is a heel. No, Dijak is absolutely a heel. 100%. Okay. I'm pretty sure Sean Spears is supposed to be a babyface. But Dijak was the one that blew the comeback. Well, you got, a, you got maybe two heels. I don't fucking know. And it's like, I saw this video, and it's like, to me, this match not being for the title, so Trick can win the belt in Philly and have his uncle in the ring with him celebrating, to me, not having that is a bigger travesty than if they beat Cody again. This guy should be your champion. He should be your top guy. He's the most popular guy in the promotion. I was just flabbergasted when this was over. And then to make it even more infuriating, they just they just now say, it's going on last. It's the biggest match. It's the best feud, best storytelling, but it's just a match. If Dragunov wasn't the champion, I'd have thought this was a get-over match for Stax with a local. Who's putting this together? You're doing classic shine spots for the heel, and the lackey to the guy that's challenged for the title is absolutely owning and killing this dude. After all that, Tony says to Luca... I want you to go invite him to a very special dinner next week. <laughs> like, a fucking dinner? He should have come out here and been doing this promo. And then all of a sudden, fucking New Day music hits. Out comes Big E. Gives the guy the big fucking pep talk. And away you go. But nope. He just retired. But not really. Braun did the catch the guy coming off the top for the doomsday device into a power slam that his yep. dad did got in like 89 or something. I don't remember when it was. Yeah. But uh, did it better, in my opinion. I love this team of Braun and Baron. You know, stand and deliver maybe the last one for a while. Give me that goddamn Axiom and Nathan Frazier match one time. That and the eel match with the great <laughs> Okan. Which you're getting, correct? I am getting that one. Perfect. Two things I care about.